guys, good morning. So today I'm working on something fairly simple. I'm gonna be cleaning up this lilac uh, that's right behind me. So this is the one that's by our fireplace area. It's really old um, and it's just full of dead branches and suckers that are producing no blooms. It just needs a thorough cleanup. And we recently planted a little hedge of Invincible Ruby hydrangeas around the base of another old lilac that I cleaned up. And I really regret not having captured the process of that job because it was such a dramatic change from what it looked like before to what it looks like now and I'm gonna go ahead and show you this one close up and then we'll go take a look at the other one because I'm hoping that this one turns out similar look at the interior here look at all of these branches most of which are dead it just looks like a complete mess the only purpose it's actually serving kind of is providing a little bit of a screen from the other areas in the garden but I don't think that's necessarily a good thing I don't think I would mind looking through and seeing the brick circle area um, it just is kind of a wreck. I also noticed that at some point in the life cycle of this lilac, somebody has gone in, see if I can get to focus here. Somebody's gone in and has tied these branches together. So this branch is tied to that one over there. I'm not really sure what's going on there. I'm sure once I get into this project, we'll figure out what's going on. And I actually expect to find some rot down in there too. Let's go look at the other one. Russell, what are you doing, buddy? This is why you should not buy dark blue cushions because your ginger cat wants to sleep on them all the time. Now just look at that one. Look at how much better it looks to have it cleaned out. I don't know if the other lilac has as many viable branches in it, so it might be a little more thin than this but this is just miles better. So you can see where I cut off a whole bunch and there were branches in here that just like popped right out of the soil. They were all rotten. But I just think it looks so good, especially once these Invincible Rubies grow up just a little bit, just to shroud the bottom layer of the lilac, then we'll have this nice structure coming from behind. I really love it. Before we get too far into that project, I did want to show you the activity that's been going on around here because if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you probably saw that we lost a huge branch out of our tree yesterday. It's the tree right behind the chicken coop. And the guys already came this morning and cleaned that one branch up. So I want to show you the damage and then tell you what else is going to happen back there. I cannot believe this year, it's just like our trees are falling apart. Um, but it kind of proves, I guess, why we're removing a lot of the trees that we are because if they are diseased or damaged in any way like that they are just a huge safety hazard and i don't want to risk that around here so anyway let's see what this looks like all right so just initially you can see that the tree most of it is still standing there were three huge trunks and the one uh, that fell went right into the fence there and i'm super thankful it was that one and not the other two because the other two would actually cause much more damage um, but you know, there is a silver lining. Like we had toyed with the idea of removing the fence. So maybe this will be the nudge we need. We also hadn't planned on removing this tree until next year, but we knew it needed to come out. Um, so we'll just get that done now. And that way we'll have a winter to think about what we want to do here. It was actually pretty crazy because I was watering right back here and I saw the whole thing go down. I heard a loud crack and I kind of knew something was going to happen. Either a branch was going to fall or something. So I frantically tried to get my phone out so I could capture it and show you guys like in action, but it was chaos and I was in a spaz. So I didn't get my camera on in time. And then I heard another really loud crack and the whole thing in like kind of slow motion came down before my eyes. And I had a sick feeling for about, oh, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. And then I thought, you know what? It's all good. You know, it gives us opportunity to do something else here. Um, and it just feels right. Like when something like that happens, then you know it's time this tree is done and needs to come out. Russell likes all of the extra sun. And in terms of plant damage, not a whole lot. I am so thankful. Like it did kind of fall on the arb here. We will have that removed because it's completely damaged. It, I don't think it'll ever really regain shape, which that's not a big deal compared to what it could have been. There were daylilies here, which we've already cleaned up. Let me get on the inside here. So daylilies have been cleaned up. There's a rose here. There was sedum here, which was already flopped over. So we just cut that back. I planted my golden chain tree here and I don't know how, but it didn't hit the leader. Like what in the world? 
So this one must have been right in between two big branches because you know you can see where a branch hit this one right here and then it also hit the fence section right here. So that just got missed. Another rose which looks fine. I mean it lost a few branches but no big deal. Um, and then the rest of everything was safe. Like the Proudberry Coralberries looking great. Fluffy Arborvita untouched. So really minimal damage. We are so thankful. So until that tree is removed, we are going to cease any work around that area because I don't, even if there's no breeze, I think it's not safe to be anywhere underneath it. Um, so those flower beds are just gonna have to fend for themselves until the guys can come back and get that cleaned up. I don't really need anything fancy for this project. I've got my bypass pruners and I'm gonna go find my Falcos, which I think I left on my garden cart somewhere else in the garden got everything scattered everywhere. All right, so I did find all of my tools. All I'm using is the bypass pruners and my Felcos, and I'm just gonna create a big pile probably in my garden cart of branches to haul off. Uh, I think I'm just gonna set up the camera to capture this process because I think that makes the most sense. I did find Benjamin's helicopter and his little plane sign that we've been missing in the flower bed right around the lilac. So at some point he was messing around in here. So sweet, the stuff we find now. I kind of love it. Um, I also did want to mention my t-shirt. So you might have noticed it says Root for Gardens on it. Um, this is a t-shirt campaign put on by kidsgardening.org, which we have done a video about before. It's an, a nonprofit that provides opportunities in a kind of a school setting for kids to get experience with gardening and learn multiple different things um, as we do through gardening. Um, so anyway, they're doing this t-shirt campaign where all the profits go toward funding more projects. Um, anyway, so I thought I would talk about that put a link down below in case you're interested in learning a little bit more. All right, let's get started. So here's a little update. You can see where I've cut all the branches off of the main trunks. And the middle, like I said, was just rotted out. So we're only getting growth from the ring of branches on the outside, which eventually I know that this lilac is gonna have to go and I'll replace it with something else. Um, look right here. These are the big trunks that just came right up out of the soil. I mean, just completely like crumbly, rotten and then here's a better look at what the branches look like that are coming out most of which are dead you can see like a little bit of leaves but mostly just branches so it's starting to look a little cleaner oh my i just got something in my eye we're crying out loud being that big oh i got it yes don't have to go inside, sweet. Point, I think I'm gonna have to go get the lawn tractor with the trailer because this got a little out of hand. I mean, I have got big piles of branches everywhere, but isn't this wild? Look at the difference. That is so much better, especially once all these little cuts heal. So you can see all those little white cuts along the stem. Those will heal and turn gray and then you won't notice them. But I am just amazed with the difference. I did hit my eye at one point. I'm not sure if it like punctured the skin or what, but probably wear eye protection while I'm doing this. There are a couple of things that I wanted to mention really quick. Uh, number one, fall is not the proper time to prune lilac. So do not follow my example here unless you have a big mess going on like I did. That's the only reason I'm tackling it right now uh, is just because it just was a mess. I mean, you guys saw it. The proper time to prune lilacs is immediately after they're done blooming, if at all. I mean, the best thing to do is just plant a lilac where it can grow to its full size. That way you're not having to prune on it. Because they 
they bloom on old wood, they need the almost the whole season after they're done blooming in order to set their buds for their blooms for the, the next year. Um, that's why it's so crucial to not prune them at the wrong time. So I wanted to make sure to mention that. And the second thing is, is that this is a short-term fix for this plant. Um, it was a mess. It was sending energy into these little spindly branches. And I do feel like by lightening the load that this plant was trying to keep alive, it probably will help it uh, have a little bit of energy. But this one, it's not long for this world because it is starting to decompose at the base. I feel like with some of these older branches, I could give them just kind of a uh, just like a light tug and I think I could get them to pop right out of the ground, which is not good um, So, you know, we fixed it for the meantime made it look better You know possibly gave it new energy to put on some new growth uh, And then eventually we're gonna pull the whole thing out and start over with something else And that's the thing you guys with plants they do have a life cycle And I think that maybe some people don't realize that that plants don't live forever and our gardens are evolving and we're doing this kind of stuff all the time and it's good and it's healthy for our gardens. So anyway, I just wanted to mention those couple of things. So now I'm just gonna tackle all the cleanup. I'm gonna get all the branches removed and rake up really well around it. And then we'll take kind of like a final backed up look at the whole area. Look at that. Maybe we can throw a before picture up just so you can see it kind of side by side, like before and after. Amazing difference. There's so much more airflow. I love that you can see through it. You can see through to the trellises over there on the wall. It just looks like a healthier plant all ready. And the structure is really nice too. Before it was kind of this blob mess of sticks and now there's some actual architecture to it. So let me just kind of walk around so you can have a view. Oh geez, I need to tuck the t tags in my furniture over there, crying out loud, or cut them off. Been meaning to do that. Oh, and you guys, this is Radiculus coleus. This is a huge question. Sorry, little side note here. Uh, you could see that in the background of our fall container video, and that's what it is. It's an amazing coleus. It actually gets really strong afternoon sun and it's doing really well up here. It's one I think I will repeat up here. Okay, let's go to the other side and take a look. So here it is as you're looking from the fireplace. Sorry, it's really bright out there, really sunny. Kind of hard to see from this angle maybe. I do have some Brunnera right here, which I might come in and add a little bit more, and those will create a really nice, like, full look right there. They got pretty trampled today. Not on purpose, but I wasn't, like, super careful. They're a tough plant. And I did plant the last incredible hydrangea right there to complete my hedge, which starts here now and goes all the way to the end. So I think that that is gonna be it for today's video. Uh, I'm really happy with the outcome of this project. I've been wanting to tackle it for quite some time and so it feels good to get out here and just get it done. It's one of those things that you kind of have to set aside a chunk of time in order to get it done because not only does it take a couple hours, but I got all dirty. So I'm gonna have to like go do a full clothes change because I brought my kneeling pad out, but it doesn't always make it to where I'm at. So my pants are filthy and my hands are filthy, so. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful just seeing um, some things like this that I'm tackling out in the garden. I mean, they're not necessarily fun things to do, but I mean, the outcome is just so awesome. It's just, I don't know, that's exciting to me. So thank you guys again for watching and we will see you in the next video, bye.